right. All right, cool. Welcome to the Cult of Personality Podcast. I'm your host, per usual, Mikey McChapa. And with me today is a very special guest, Hillicon. How's it going today? I'm chilling, man. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, I woke up not too long ago, and I just did this whole makeshift setup that you kind of watched me put together to have the camera set up and the mic set up, because nothing is certain, right? Like, nothing is certain with my whole podcast setup right now, so each episode, I'm doing a different thing. Sometimes I'm doing it on the couch, which is behind me. Sometimes I I just figured out this is a good spot over here, and this is kind of like my kitchen, living room area. You know, and then I have this other yes, room, yes. which is supposed to be like the actual podcast room. So I've been having trouble with that. But besides that, you know, we're here and we're chilling and I'm very happy to have you on. This is actually the second to last episode of the season. This is the third oh, season nice. of the pod. Hell yeah. So thank you for coming on. Uh, How do you find the podcast, man? Um, one of my homies sent this to me through, uh, my, my personal, uh, collectives group chat okay. and, um, oh my God, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. All my good. friends are trying to give me on VC. No, all good. All good. No worries. No worries. That's what's up though. I always like to find out how people are finding out about the pod because I guess it helps with like demographic and marketing oh, and like, you know, shit like that. But also I'm just curious too, because it's kind of surreal now, like doing this pod, like remembering that people can perceive me and like, and people actually enjoy what I'm putting out and stuff, you know? So it's crazy. Right. It's crazy. No, it is like, I kind of had the same like surrealism with my music as well. Since I ever started making music, it was like, at first it was kind of like a joke. And then like, eventually like kind of evolved into something more. Because people actually started paying attention to me more. And it's like, I, I recently hit 3K on the song. And I was like, whoa. Like, that was kind of, like, crazy to me. Right. So you know, like, so that's... it's just, it's crazy. But, yeah, no. So, continue on. Were you, did you have any more to say about how you found the pod? Um, I think, I, if I could go back to my Instagram DMs, I'm pretty sure it was, like, uh, my homie Drax. I mean, Draz. Yeah, King Draz. That's what's up. Shout out. Yeah, shout out whomever. Me, yeah. Yeah, it's shout out triple six. That's my, uh, yeah. my collective. Yeah. Awesome. So you have a collective. That's cool. That's something to like really like dive into. Um, yeah. but I won't we won't dive into it yet because I want to focus on you first before we move on to anything right. else. Right. Um That's but yeah, no, man. Hold on, I got a hair on my keyboard. We're just gonna take that off. Whoop. But um, no, yeah. Uh, but that's cool. I just wanted to figure it out because I hadn't recognized your name from anywhere, and not that I'm leaving good with names or anything like that. But like, I, I try to, I try to keep track of like people that I recognize, like are like longtime fans of the pod, or people right. I know, or people like I'm mutuals with, or anything like that. So and I was like, this guy's new, so that was cool. But right, um, yeah, no, I'm like uh Tampa, Tampa local, like Florida local. Florida, that's what's up. You yeah. know, that's so crazy that you just said, said that because I was just gonna ask where are you from before you even mentioned it. So it works out. It works out completely. That's <laughs> cool, man. I got I got a lot of family in Florida. How's that like out there? How was growing up out there like? Dog, it is. Florida is like growing up in like a fucking a sewer, getting attacked by a bunch of rats at the same. Like it's just it's bad. Like living in Florida is just like it's fun sometimes and then you have to like deal with like random shit that happens like fucking crackheads or some shit it's just it's a mess it's a mess it's it's pretty bad but it's it's fun <laughs> yeah we um the other week i i interviewed a guy from florida probably like a month or two ago and oh, really? he he was talking about the same stuff but florida's crazy and i mean i've been to florida plenty full of times it's, i know what we insane. i know what be going on out there and stuff and it's it's a crazy environment it's just you know and I mean, I live in New York City, so I'm not used. To, I mean, I'm used to crazy. I'm used to right. all the all the you know you see all the crazy shit over here. But yeah, over New York's there, New York's pretty bad too. That's pretty bad too. <laughs> you guys do it. You guys definitely do it different in the South when it comes to what crazy. Definitely. Yeah, and definitely. I don't, I don't know if it has to do with just fucking jeans or what y'all breathe the or culture. eat over there. 
Or it's just the it culture. Just, yeah. I think it also has to do heavily with like Southern politics being so lenient compared to Northern politics. Like yeah. our gun laws are shit. Our, our, our gun laws are very strict over here compared to Florida and shit like that. They passed a bill that you could just like have an open uh, fa- firearm with you. Like pretty much like if you have the, uh, the registration and everything. Right. So it's only going to get even crazier, you know? Oh, but absolutely. That's- that's what's up, man. And Tampa, what part of Tampa are you in? You are because I know it's like half swamp, half like, like city. Actual Tampa, like Tampa, Tampa. Yeah, Tampa, yeah. Tampa. Like That's city, what's Tampa. Up. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's cool. Hell yeah. Sorry. Anywho. No, you're good. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's like this wire has like a weird texture. I'm like, what is this? My cat keeps jumping on the table. I'm like, yo, what's going on? But There's a lot of things happening at once. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's even overstimulating. I'm just here like, what is going it's on? It's overwhelmed. Yeah, like completely overwhelmed. I get that a lot. Especially when I make music, I just sit there and like freaking 50 things happen to me at the same time. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to record, relax, like chill. Yeah, man. And it's like I'm trying to run a pod and this whole thing is about like asking questions and trying to keep a train of thought and like a consistent conversation. It's like so many distractions. You forget where yeah. the fuck you are. You burn out and shit. I smoke, you know, it's like I, this doesn't yeah, help I just, anything. Yeah. So, but beyond that, be no more dilly dally. I just wanted to establish a couple questions about you before we got like into like the Absolutely. the real like gist of the whole pod. And this is all off the top of the dome. This is all freestyle. I kind of just ask whatever, but I do try to keep some structure with on the pod. And therefore, there are repeated questions or questions that come the same question that comes up in every episode, and it goes a little like this. You might have seen it on our Instagram. Yeah. Kill a Khan. The name, Dude. the image, the aura, and the energy. How to start, how to get here, and everything in between. Kind of like your whole origin story. You know, what got you into the music? What got you into where you are right now? That is actually like a very interesting thing about how I did actually end up getting into music. So a little backstory on myself because... I was in and out of foster homes for a while in my life. Like I was in and out of foster homes for like four or five years of my life. And in between those years, I, uh, I met a lot of people. I met a lot of big producers. I met a lot of big rappers during that time. And around that time, I started freestyling when I was like in the, uh, in the shelter because it was kind of like a jail home. It was just like you're in the fucking room, you're just doing whatever. Right. So I developed my time writing lyrics, doing freestyles, doing all that. And then, um, when I moved back with my dad, he got uh, legal rights with me and my uh, my siblings and whatnot. And whenever that happened, I ended up meeting uh, a producer that was very local. His name is Iraq Mule. He's um, he does work with Meet Computer. Um, he had communication with Snai. He he he's he has some he has some pretty good uh, outlets and stuff. He has some pretty good like you know. And That's I went really to cool. his house. Yeah, I went to his house. I recorded my first like legitimate song because I made songs that were like really bad. I recorded it off my phone and I like played it on my TV and I was right. just like freestyling next to it. But right. I went to a legitimate like studio type of thing and he sat me down and like explained everything to me. So it was like the first time was like super difficult. I was like struggling to even like freestyle because usually I'm I, I know how to freestyle relatively well. I don't want to be like fucking like oh like I'm going yeah. more and yeah, yeah I feel like, you. no I'm not I'm not trying to do like that but yet again I also do have some experience with it because I've been doing it for such a long time and right. it's very different when you're actually inside of a studio or inside of like about to record something because you hear monitoring you have all this like equipment in front of you and you don't really know what you're doing it's your first time so right. that song dropped I ended up getting like 300 plays on it like my first song and I was like really proud of that and I was like wow that's pretty cool. Humble, humble and, beginnings. Me too. Yeah, I know, right? Like, I was like, wow. All right. Well, fuck it. I guess we ball. But right. um, after that, I stopped making music for about like three, four months because I was actually mainly skating. I uh, I skated a lot. I still do to this day. I love skating. Um, That's awesome, man. We'll get a little into yeah. that later. Keep, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, So I stopped m- making music. I started skating for a while. And then after uh, after all that happened, because I had like a little mental break, where I was like, "Fuck, I can't, I can't continue skating because it's like hurting me. It's like doing a bunch of shit to my body that I, I just can't have." So I stopped for a little bit. And then a homie I met from school, uh, shout out Infinitus XXL. He's the fucking plug for real. Like he dead ass put me on the map for real. Like every single like most of my recent songs 
are because of him, like, because he helped me get to where I need to be. So I could actually use FL on my own now. Like I didn't even know how to use FL back then, but right. um, when I first started recording with them, I even told them multiple times, I'm like, bro, your new, like your older shit sucked ass. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like you're shut. You're, I'm being real. I mean, he knows this. He, he could see this. He'd be like, yeah, I can agree. And I told him like, yo, we need to start collaborating so then we can get more better. We could put out better content. He's like, all right, that's cool. I ended up going over there for a few weeks on end, um, a few months on end and whatnot. And then eventually um, I ended up uh, making a bunch of songs with him. And then over time, we both developed a, a certain sound and a certain like a certain genre, I should say. Not entirely, because right. we kind of like bounced around everything, but it was like um, it was like a very big connection because that like, like helped me a lot. Yeah, it sounds like kind of finding your own sound, you know. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the beauty of it, because whenever I uh, started working with him, the more I did, the more uh, the more better I got with my own development of my own sound and whatnot. And it just like it boosted me, it boosted him, and it boosted my collective, because now. Uh, everyone in my collective and everyone that I've been talking to, like that's been helping me with this stuff has been like very, has been popping. They've been, they've been getting some numbers recently. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, I, popping, I mean like under a couple thousand, but it's okay. You know? Yeah. And, and what's cool with that is that I always like the idea of collectives and the idea of like a group setting and like helping each other succeed at the same like common goal. So, like, to hear that you guys really put in that work and do it right and, like, have right. something good going is really cool and admirable. I, um, yeah, I think it's cool that you guys, like, push each other to succeed and you guys are seeing, um, you know, like, the fruits of your labor because of that. Yeah, absolutely. We don't spare each other's feelings either when it comes to music. Like, if it's ass, we'll straight up say, this is garbage. Redo this right. song or do something different. Because we can't be sitting here lying to each other and being like, oh, yeah this is good. And, but in reality, this song is like the worst song that you've ever put out. You know what I mean? Like it's, right. con it's quality control. It's quality control. Word. I feel you. I feel you. It just, you know, the only thing that's like dangerous with like collectives and shit like that, at least from like what I've experienced, like as an, as, as an artist and shit is just like, uh -huh. sometimes, sometimes it becomes like a real pecking order, you know? And like yep. people start trying to put themselves on like pedestals and like, mm -hmm. And it's like there's no there's no there's no room for that in like a collective. There's not there's that that supposed to be like that, equal. I do have a little story. It is is quick, but I do have a little story about someone. So I'm not gonna name drop. I'm not gonna name drop just out of respect, just because I'm not gonna start shit. But of course. so back in the day, um fun fact, my collective now used to be called Bomb Vest, right? I had a mm -hmm. member who screwed me over back then he wanted because bomb vest was originally a skate collective it was like people who just skate purely who just skate and some musicians right. and it was kind of like odd feature i kind of had it like odd feature and the thing is uh erock the same dude i met uh previously the dude i was talking about earlier he um was the person who had all the camera equipment and whatnot and this dude he ended up stealing some of the footage whatever whatever right, right. But he didn't end up stealing it. he tried to he tried to and he ended up getting kicked out so knowing that information, a few months go by, I actually developed triple six. I have everything like my main people are in, in the collective. And then I started adding new people, right? So not the name drop this dude either because I'm not starting shit, but um, he joined the collective and it was a big ordeal because he had some thing going on with one, uh, one of my exes and some other shit was going on, but it's a, it's a big debacle. It's big as hell but drama uh, what ended up happening yeah extremely like it is there's a lot of lore there's a lot of lore in that but what ended up happening was that he told her because she was also my best friend she told me everything like she told me absolutely everything and he she sent me screenshots of this man saying oh i'm gonna take over this collective i'm gonna make them run circles around me and shit so what ended up happening was that we all like i told everyone in the collective I made them aware about the situation and they're like, all right, what are we going to do? I said, immediately I, I confronted him. I was like, yo, get the fuck out of my group. You're not allowed in. Like you're no, that's not cash money. Of you. Like, fuck you. Like, no. And right. what happened was that he started like, he was like, I'm going to quit music and all this extra shit. And he made it a big ass ordeal. And I was like, dude, it's not that deep. Like you literally just were talking shit behind everyone's back. Like it was a big ordeal, but yeah, don't trust, don't trust strangers unless you know them. Word. Man. Old story. 
Yeah, man, that shit. It, it, it's crazy. It's like almost like a Judas story, you know. People yep. like it, you know, and that's why they say like, "Oh, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer." And, and it's people like that who plot and on other people's success and plot on a lot of trying, the time, yeah, on sabotaging other people and stuff, you know. And this be that's why they keep people so close is to try to you know. There's all you know. It's crazy that there's people like that to begin with, but you got to keep an eye out and be aware of shit like that. So. Yeah, it's and that's crazy what I've been doing recently as well. And yeah, man, I mean, I've had plenty of um, failed fucking collectives and shit. And the first collective I was ever a part oh, of. God. Hold on. Oh, shit. We lost an earbud. My fault. <laughs> My Slight intermission. Like halfway through your talking. Slight intermission, folks. It is all right. Uh, the weather outside is beautiful. 61 degrees. Oh, shit. He left. Oh shit! Hold up, hold up, hold up. Anyway, how's it going, guys? This is a good one-on-one conversation opportunity on the pod, Mikey McChapa. Oh, and he's back. Oh, welcome back. My bad. <laughs> all good, my, man. Well, um, yeah, my earbud died, and I had to like restart my phone. All good, all good. Um, what I was saying, yeah, the first collective I was ever a part of, man, was called uh called Shiver Set. And I fucking joined it, and I like had barely had music out at the time. I mean, I barely have music out now. But that's because I like delete a lot of shit and like, you know, whatever. But back yeah, then, I, did I the really, same thing. back then, I really hadn't even like made anything for real. I had made like one song with my man's from high school, and they put me in this collective or whatever because they fucked with my man's. So they fucked with me type shit. It wasn't even like they fucked with me for real though, you know. Right. And yo, but like long story short, they fucked with me and whatever. Like, you know, nobody disrespected me, but they started like I guess like recruiting other people in the collective. And like this like cause other like it was like pretty much people weren't communicating. It was like if someone uh, wanted their friend in the collective, they would like yo be like, yo, can we have him in the collective? And people would be like, Yeah, sure, I don't see why not. But then one dude would be like, nah, his music's ass, da da da. And then it'd be like a giant debacle. Yeah. I joined the collective. The next day, the collective was over. Oh, my God. And it wasn't my <laughs> fault at all. It was them having a debacle about a whole other thing, you know? So, so like, immediately after you joined, just like, no. Yeah, no, yeah, no more. Yeah, yeah, they because they tried, uh, I guess, recruiting two other people. And I remember, I, I remember both of them. I'm still cool with one of them, but I remember both of them. They were trying to recruit two other people. And and the guy who ran the collective just wasn't feeling it. He was like, "No, their music is ass," and da da da. And like everyone was like, "You know what? You're an asshole." And everyone left the pot or, or left the fucking collective. I mean, shit. At that point, you would just have to compromise. At that point, like it's not that deep. It's never gonna be that deep, right? But you know, and then I had we had another collective. There was a couple collectives that some just didn't even take off the ground. But then. There was another one that we had recently, oh, not recently, two years ago, and called Civil Run. And long story short, everyone just got, like, you know, it was kind of crazy, because with that collective, because it's not only, like, a pecking order thing, I feel like, with collectives, not to talk too much. I know I'm supposed to, like, be asking no, you're good. questions. But, like, with, with collectives, sometimes it's also just, like, not having the same goals or having the same drive and shit, like... I love everyone that I was in the, my last, like, collective with when I was making music. And I talk to all of them still. Or at least, like, you know, have them on socials and stuff. And, like, keep in touch. But it, it we were all in this collective at a time where we were all graduating high school and shit. Oh, so I see. It, so what happens is, is like, people kind of get... Some people continue on with school or with work and shit like that and just go the regular route. And some people still, like, stick to the music shit and you know pursue the music shit some people try to yeah. do both and therefore the, and, it didn't work out and other people will just go other directions with it as well yeah you know so it's just like shit you know that's the only tricky things about collectives but when you do them right long story short to bring this all back around when you do them right it's really cool because they're really helpful and growthful to artists all around the fucking yeah. globe Especially if there's no like actual beef between anyone either. It's just like peace. It's just straight peace and everyone's just working on the common goal. It's just perfect. Right. It's perfect. Peace, peace and ego, man. I think yeah. honestly, bro, 
I feel like collectives work better too when like you just have a group of mature people. Like that's why like people try to start collectives when they're like doing music shit. And a lot of these music kids are young and stuff, you know. Yeah. Like, you you gotta remember like not everyone is mature. People are fucking, you know, or fucking. Especially when you're young, you're like fucking hormonal and starting beef for no reason. So shit. Just yeah. No. Crazy. I mean, I'm pretty young myself. I'm only like 17, but my my collective is like so everyone's like around the same age, like 17, 18, but like. We don't start shit because we know not to start shit because we all are like this with each other. Right. Like we know gotta... we known each other for so long. It's just like, why the fuck would we start anything? You know what I mean? Like, right. It's just like you make no sense. Those type of, those type of friends that you're just like, you know, it's like just chill. It's like, yeah. why would I even beef with this guy? Like we just dumb chill every time, you know? That's awesome. To have like a group of like minded people that you guys all have this common goal that you guys put like ego aside and you guys, you know, focus. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, so that's awesome, bro. And it's cool that you plug in the collective on the pod and like give that exposure because Oh, absolutely. Like, I was that was told the first thing I have to do is that. They're like, yo, plug it. I'm like, I got you. <laughs> I was like, I got you, bro. Hell yeah. And if there's any links to like a a, a collective SoundCloud or like playlist or anything like that, after the pod, send it to me and we'll have that shit in the description below so people can like really check it out for real. Yeah. Check everybody out. But um, no, yeah. But moving away from the collective, although, you know, I'm I'm very happy that we did discuss it and moving back on towards you and kind of like you right. as a, a, uh, a individual. How did you get the name Killicon? See, that backstory is very convoluted. So I can't really get too much detail on how much how I got Killicon, but just know it was due to some really messed up things that happened around me. But <laughs> All right, it was all right. it was a very bad backstory, but like I can't really t- talk too deep into it. But that's all you need to know. That's all I can say. All right, that's fair. That's cool. Yeah, it's kind of like a part of the first question. That's why I kind of just like wanted to just see real quick. Yeah, but, you good. Um, moving on forth, and then this is usually a question I kind of hit afterwards, or I like to talk about when it comes to interviewing musicians and stuff, which is like inspirations and stuff. It could be anybody. It could be you know artists as big as fucking like. Michael Jackson, all the way down to your fucking neighbor Larry who right. plays his piano in the basement, you know? Or anybody, anyone, anything that's inspired you, movie, person, whatever, a show that's inspired you, that inspired you to make music, to start making music that made you decide, like, hey, I want to do this shit, you know? Right. My biggest actual influence would probably just be, like, X, Suicide Boy, Ski Mask, people like that, like, the very big underground artist, and, like, a lot of very underground artists as well um stain 555 or so it was like three to three stain three to three um die perry um my homie jacoons i i can't really pronounce his name right because it's like french or whatever but it's it's it, they're cool people they help me a lot well the people i just mentioned like they help me a lot like mentally with like knowing right. how to make music like how to like uh like how to um i can't think right now um how to place down the music like how to like keep everything in order i should say like how to keep everything in order let's pull okay. it how to organize my other earbud's about to die oh uh, man r.i.p the other earbud <laughs> the mean, other one's on the charger when the other one died it didn't sound too bad i don't know why before that we were getting a delay but you know it is what it is it was my alexa right right yeah oh yeah man so with that being said, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we got in, I mean, throughout the pod and like asking people that question um, throughout the pod, like, oh, inspirations and stuff. We get a lot of people with X and, and, and Suicide Boys and Ski Masks, which I always think is yeah. so crazy because it's like, these were regular. They're very people. big influence, like in, influencers, like society, like they influence a fuck ton of people. Like, that's just a thing. It's crazy too because some of these artists even nowadays kind of like, not even fell off. Like, obviously, like people like Ski Mask and and Suicide Boys are are still producing and making music, but like I don't even listen to Ski Mask anymore, you know? Yeah. Shit like that. And I mean, I never really listened to Suicide. Uh, never really listened to Suicide Boys, but I know they're like really big. However, all well, that being said, like these people nowadays in twenty twenty three, like they just kind of they're regular, they're cool, you know, they're cool artists. But right, they were so big at a time that they still have ongoing influence today, which I think it's so crazy, you know? Yeah. Oh. Forgot to mention Xavier Wolf, big one. I I can't forget Xavier Wolf or Black Cray. Those two. Mm. I can't really forget fuck, those two either. I fuck with Black Cray heavy when I found Black yeah, Cray. Yeah, bro. I was, I was like, yo, 
I don't know. It was kind of cool to find someone like, like who like fused the two styles he did because he fused like, mm-hmm. like some hood shit with his style and his music, also with like the like funk, like the like the little like the like cloud ambient, but yeah, the, the quirkiness that comes with like fucking the whole alternative SoundCloud scene, whether it's cloud rap or emo rap influence and stuff like that. So that's I fuck with Black Cray, you know. He was that, doing that shit before anybody. Yeah, the same. I I can't. Okay, controversial opinion. Fuck Lil Tracy, but I love Young Bro. Yeah, I mean Lil Tracy yeah. got bangers as Lil Tracy though. I I fuck with Young Bro more. I'm not gonna lie. Young Bro is just I, like top tier. Young Bro is top tier. Like his discography as Young Bro is fucking amazing. But you can't shit on. I mean, his music now is definitely not what it was. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not the same. Like, that's why but I like, had that. Even opinion. if, even if you go back, not even like you don't even have to go back to like Young Bro. If you go back to like 2018, 2019, like Anarchy and, and yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, you're right. And, and Designer Talk One and shit like that. Those were good albums. Those were really good projects. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they now were. he, now I feel you. He dropped stuff now, and I'm kind of like, eh. Designer Talk Two was eh. So I feel you. Yeah. You know? No, Young Bro is like he has a special place in my heart. Young bro young does. Bro, Tracy, when, Tracy just like kind of fell off. Dude, when I found Young bro, I found Young bro in high school, bro, and I thought I was so. It was like finding a whole different world to find that, yeah. like, because I was already so deep into Little Tracy when I found like the Young bro side of Little Tracy, that when I found Young bro and that he had this whole other like style and like this whole discography of songs in that style, it found like it was like whoa, you know, because I was yeah. already so into like everything that I knew. Of little Tracy, so that's what's up. Hell yeah, though, Young Bro. What's your favorite Young Bro song? Either like I know this is overrated as hell, but they're both two good ass songs. I can't put it like specifically on one, but it's Love and Drugs and uh, Soldier Witch. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah, I fuck with um. I be bumping punk blunts. I be bopping. I be bumping, that's hard. Um, what is it? I like her. I know that was like super mainstream, but that was fire. That's like probably my favorite Young Bro track. And then I like, I like hers um, pretty good. Yeah. What's the other one? Hold on. Damn. What was it? Excuse you good. Bless you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Damn. What was the other one? It was Punk Blunt. It was all. Oh, Little Tracy Man. Little Tracy Man. Oh, yeah. The birth of Little Tracy. Young Lil Tracy, man. Yeah, that's just hard. Um, you know, it's crazy though because I feel like even like Lil Tracy, if I had to pick a little favorite Lil Tracy song, bruh, it's weird because it's like I would say like it's confusing because it's like in between Young Bruh and Lil Tracy, but it was like off this song. It's like in that middle era, like where he was trying to like transition. Yeah, it was off the project he had with MacNed. It was um. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um. That's, it's produced by Fishnark. It's like the first fucking thing, bro. I think, I, think like, I know what you're talking about. I just forgot. I think it's like higher than a feeling or some shit. Something. Higher than something. And the chorus is like, you know, my bitch can't get higher than me. That shit's fire. Yeah. I think I know I like, what you're talking about. Yeah. That shit's fire. That's like my favorite little Tracy track. Or, you know, or, or like the Golf Boy Click album, like the first track with Tracy is fire too. Desire. But um, yeah, moving on for us, you know, I just got like into a whole Tracy tangent. No, you're fine. I did too, bro. Listen, they're just the goats. You can't just, it just happens. <laughs> with, the, with the pod and shit, bro, like I hope people don't forget, like I'm a regular person too. And like the reason why I started the pod is because like I'm a super fan of music. So like I could really chop it up and talk for hours about all this shit, you know? Yeah, I really could too. Like, yeah. <laughs> Be like, yo, it's, bro, this track, this track, these it's instruments. So fucking why, fire, like, man. It, like, goddamn. Yo, bro. <laughs> I mean, like, a part of my day every day is like smoking a blunt with my girl and just putting on music and being like, yo, this motherfucker was fire. The banger, he bro. He does it like this, da da da, you know, whatever. Like, bro, too funny. But, um, moving on forth and bringing it back to fucking Killer Con. Uh <laughs> man, I want to talk to you a little more. We talked about inspiration. We talked about the name, the image, the aura, and all that stuff. Now I want to move it a little towards the future, or not even the future. We'll bring it back a little bit. We want. I want to move it to music-related endeavors, such as like what do you got going on 
or do you have any established already things such as um, like music videos, merchandise, stuff like so that? Things, things the thing about the all that. The thing about all that is that I do, I am, I am currently trying to work on a merchandise line. But the only mm-hmm. problem with that, I'm waiting to actually get a little bit of notoriety before I even do that. That's why I'm doing these interviews. That's why I'm doing a bunch of other things. That's why I'm trying to promote as much as possible so I can drop these things. Because right. I I am having a plan with one of my homies. He is going to uh, make a fuck ton of stickers with my uh, my logo on it and uh, a QR code. And I'm like go around like everywhere, slapping the bitches everywhere. Make sure hopefully people get them. I'm gonna put them on cars too. I don't care if it's illegal. I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't really care. He's gonna it's... indict himself. He's gonna have bro. I don't bro on look, the car. MF Doom was right. Rap snitches is real. Rap snitches is real. <laughs> Man, fucking no. But you know what? Taking that aggressive approach to marketing is really smart though, because that's kind of like the in your face shit that you can't avoid. You know that's the type of style i'm on but merchandise actual merchandise like i said is coming soon music videos i do have a couple uh, prospects uh in view right now and i am trying to get some um uh some people to help me out with that because i do know a few people but the only problem is is that uh the availability has been very off so like i said i'm sick right now i would have been able to do it this weekend but i'm probably gonna be sick for a little bit but um I fucking, I talked to a few of my friends about that. They were like, yo, we could do this, this, and that. And my friend is buying his uh, his editing software so he could actually edit the videos and whatnot. So that's coming soon. Music-wise, I um, the collective EP is coming out rel- relatively soon. By the end of this month or the start of next, uh, around that time, uh, we're going to be dropping Triple Six Forever. Uh, really big. Uh, uh, it's not big, but it's like semi, semi sort of big because there are a lot of very high-quality songs with very like put a lot of effort into them and whatnot and we put a fucking heart and souls in them so that's coming oh, out yeah soon. that's awesome um that's kind of cool i'm glad that you like pinpointed and like bullet pointed with dates and stuff on when shit is coming out yeah because that's really cool for people who are interested to obviously put a market on their calendars but also you know it's really you have cool to be structured I, I, a little bit right you know so like i'm not very structured but like it's just like i'm also like yet again i have to be structured to a degree like i can just talk about whatever but like i also have to like you know do whatever i also need to do i feel you i'm not a very structured person like but this pod bro this is the most structured i've ever been with anything i've ever created and i'd be missing like a week (laughs) two weeks i'd be like sorry no episode i forgot to interview someone this week oopsies oopsie you know and i'm supposed to be like a content creator and stuff you know but i really yeah. do this because i love it but i also don't want to make it something that i don't love because i'm forcing it upon myself like a job right but when i need a break i take a break you know so yeah of course with that being said bro um i want to talk about how that collective ep or album that you're talking about discussing that's coming up how that came to be how did you guys decide that you were doing that was it a uh Kind of like, hey, we all have these tracks we like that we all created. Let's put it in one project. Or was it like we're working towards this common goal of putting this project together? It was actually just out of the blue. It was literally yeah. because we sampled. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little give a little snippet in a minute, but it was a, a sample of X on I think it was R. P. Roach. We sampled X's vocals and we put like a jazz loop on it and heavy ass eight oh eights. And I was like, yo. We need to make we need to make a fucking EP. We need to start an EP for Triple Six. This shit's hard. He was like, "Fuck it, let's do it." I was like, "All right, bet." That's awesome. With the name Triple Six and the collective Triple Six, are you like a founder of the collective, or are you just a member? Yeah, founder? yeah, I'm a founder. Yeah, I'm a so founder. So, where did the name come from? And I gotta ask: Is the name anywhere inspired by Three Six Mafia by any chance? Um, not entirely. I kind of came up with it on the bus with my homie Malik. Um, the reason why I chose triple six is because I used to be extremely big on gothic culture. I still kind of am. Um, I'm wearing a misfit shirt right fucking now. I mean, shit, like, it's just like, I used to, I grew up on that shit and it's like, I love, I love that culture and I love everything around it. And the only problem I have with it, I'm not satanic, nothing of the sort. It's nothing like I worship the devil or anything crazy like that. It's more or less just like to piss off old white people. I mean, even if, you were sat- people, bro. even if you were satanic, I wouldn't judge you. I don't judge anybody. But Either way, bro, yeah. It's just like, yet again, 
it's not it's not me being satanic it's just me being fucking ignorant it's me being, pissing people off <laughs> i feel you man i mean when i was around your age not to like sound like that because i'm only fucking 20 i'm making myself sound old i feel so yeah, old no, now good. that i hit 20 <laughs> bro 20 see, ugh, it's gonna ugh, happen to me too Ugh, i just icked myself out but when i was around your age that's when i was like really like heavy deep like just into like my straight like punk shit and yeah. goth shit. It's kind of cool that you brought the Misfits because they're kind of like that hybrid between goth and punk. Which Bro, I, I have cool. a Misfits vinyl right there. I got the corn vinyl. I got a fucking 21 Pilots vinyl around here somewhere. I got, Yo, a, I, I got a bunch I, of vinyls, bro. Don't start with 21 <laughs> Pilots. I used to be a 21 <laughs> Pilots fan. I used to be... What? I used to be the Sorry, biggest... Fan, I used to be the biggest 21 Pilots fan in, in middle school, bro. Shit's Bro, crazy. Th- yeah, we can't we can't dwell on that. We gotta we gotta move past that before I, we get I, fucking forever. I I bury that shit in my brain, bruh. I will talk <laughs> I gotta talk about it one day, like in depth. I mean I brought it up a couple times on here, but I gotta bring it up one day to where it's just like really spill the beans. But just to address it, yeah. With, with with that being said, hell yeah, bro. I like when it comes to punk shit, bro. I'm a I like black flag, even though they have like yeah, 5, black flag is so good. Teams. I got damaged on vinyl since we we're talking like you were talking about vinyl and shit. I got damaged on vinyl. Mm. That's good album. Hell yeah. But um if you I, I want to put you on real quick. If you ever heard of Trey Polyum, they, they make some really weird ass like uh death metal. It's like jazz death metal. It's weird yeah. as fuck, but it's so hard. Like I'm gonna sample it sometime soon. I gotta check that out, bro, because I'm the kind of guy like I don't know. When I was a kid, bro, I used to be very small-minded and narrow-minded with music. Like, I would just listen to, like, only, like, alt shit and shit. Like, you know, right. like, the fuck falls under that term nowadays. But, um, you know, now I'm like, I listen to anything, bro. Country, funk, jazz, fucking See. Rap, I can't. Rock. I can't bring myself to listen to country. I can never bring myself to listen to country. Bro, because you know why, I grew why, up on bro? it. It sucks. <laughs> no. Here's the thing, bro. Here's what I realized, because I I never had exposure to country music for real, because I'm from New York City. We just don't listen yeah. to that over here, you know? So, but whenever I, I always used to be like, no, nah, I don't listen to country music, too, because whenever I heard country music, it was always some cornball ass, my pickup yeah. truck, my guitar, my dog, my <laughs> wife left me shit. Shut the fuck up. But I listened, I, then I found shit like... um. And it's funny because it's like mainstream country as well, but people really don't talk about it because it's older. I guess after, yeah. I think after like 9 11, country music just went super Republican out of nowhere. But before, back in the day, uh, like Willie Nelson and shit, there's a lot of outlaw country and it was a lot of critiques towards right. the government, towards, you know, conservat- conservatism and all that shit and stuff like that. A-, a lot of critiques against the prison system and shit. I fucking love outlaw country music, bro. It's really fucking dope. I'll check it out. I'll, I'll, I'll like, bring myself to listen to it. If it's, it's like, out, if it's like that, then fuck it. I mean, it's. I mean, yeah. Listen to like. I, I would recommend like, like just put in. Honestly, bro. Uh, how I got into it was I literally just looked up outlaw country into Spotify, and it's just a whole playlist of all that shit. And you find a couple of good bangers. You find some that are. Oh, boring. I see. You find what you like, you know. Hell right, yeah, bro. But I fucking it took all it took that and now i fucking love country music and so it's cool you know but yeah, um, I feel that. yeah i feel that going back a little bit because you had said something that i was going to expand on more oh we're pissing off old white folks bro i completely feel it, especially bro when I, was, <laughs> bro when i was 17 i lived um i mean even i i just moved out a couple fucking months ago like two or three months ago up until then before that i was living upstate in upstate New York, right? And if you if uh, nobody really knows anything about upstate New York because New York City overshadows the rest of the state. Yeah, because it's like it's just New York, like it's fucking New right. York. Right, right. It overshadows New York State, but people don't realize that when you go upstate, like far enough, you just come back down to the south. It's just all white people and gas stations, and they're extremely racist. Oh my god! If you're not in Albany or New York City. Or like maybe Westchester County, right above New York City, you're it's it's full of shit. It's full of garbage. So mm. when I was younger, like 17, 16, all that shit, I was really hell bent on the same shit. Just like, you know, just like pissing off old white folk. Fuck your politics. Fuck all this shit, bro. I fucking, you know? So I feel yeah. like I just like I, I don't know why, but like I, 
Eric Andre was a big influence on that part because he low key turned me into a fucking asshole. He turned me into a complete dick. Like, Bro. I would walk around public. I would go to fucking Walmart. I remember going to Walmart with my homie. <laughs> I fucking grabbed one of the balls. I saw an employee walk by. I said, Boom! I threw that bitch. I turned running at the fucking Walmart. They all started chasing me. That shit was funny. It was funny as hell. Fucking <laughs> looking back on it, it's like terrorizing minimum wage workers. Oh, it it's is. Like... It's fucking hilarious, though. I don't but, care. But... It was funny. With that being said, bro, it's like fucking. What was I gonna say? Shit, man, I had my fair share of like Walmart fun. I fucking done built like fucking like toilet paper forts and shit as a kid. <laughs> but when I was a kid, bro, I used to be a real asshole because of shit like that too. Like you know, I grew up, I grew up when I was like 13, 14, 12, 13, 14, whatever. Like I grew up with like the commentary YouTuber era, like Leafy yeah, Leafy, yeah, like Leafy and Pyro. Pyro Cynical you're one of the like first that. you're one of the few people that actually still like that still know about leafy because leafy's like a dead breed now yeah i mean he, and and rightfully so he kind of just like tries to hold on yeah. to relevancy by like the littlest string and it's like bro you're stay in 2016 bro nobody wants you anymore get out of here but yeah that's crazy. when i was when i was younger bro i used to eat that shit up i love that shit no crumbs left yeah for real up, I, would, I would i would binge that shit sometimes bro Pyrocynical, fucking uh, the yeah. drama alert, whatever the fuck, all that YouTuber shit. I was in that shit, bro. I used to make commentary videos, and I would like, oh uh, lord, <laughs> I would, I would be in drama with kids on YouTube. I would be in dramas with kids in my school, and I would just talk shit about. I would just commentate on how I felt about everything on my YouTube channel, kind of right. like now with this, but on a on a thirteen year old level where I'm still here thinking that right. it's funny to make fun of like. All this, like, the, all this offensive shit and stuff. You know when I'm a stupid fucking yeah, kid, Yeah, like, you know? the edgy, so... edgy bullshit. Yeah, I mean, man. I'm still yeah. on my edgy bullshit. Like, I'm still a little bit on my edgy bullshit. It's not to the point where it's, like, super cancelable. Like, I, I would say some fuck shit recently. Like, I will say some random fuck shit. But, like, it's not I to mean, the point where it's, like, super bad. I'm at you the point I mean? in life. I'm at the point in life where, like, I don't give a fuck how people view me. Depending exactly. on my beliefs, Fuck your feelings. and I'm not, and I'm not a person that believes in like super controversial shit. Like, of, of course, I believe in fucking, I, I believe in human rights for fucking immigrants, and I believe in human rights for gay people, and I believe in human rights for people of every color. I, I believe in, yeah. freedom, you know, I, I'm very, I'm very progressive and liberal towards my beliefs, or however you want to say, very, right. you know. And when it comes to politics, it could be even very radical because when it comes to capitalism and stuff, that's a whole other ball game that I get into. And me stuff, personally, but... I don't even, to be honest, I don't even have a political outlook like that. The only political problems I do see is like fucking old white people pissing me off. Right, right. But <laughs> that's you know why what? I piss them off. <laughs> but some people get warped in like the internet and like being like, yeah. I, like you know, like being like, uh, what's the word? Chronically online. People become yep. like brainwashed into being super liberal or super Republican, super conservative, whatever you want to say. Especially like, if I... they're on like certain Reddit forums or certain like YouTube videos or shit like that. It will keep giving you that certain shit. If you watch, like, it's like the algorithm. If you watch one video, more of that one video will start showing up. If you watch right. a Republican video, more Republican videos will show up. If you watch liberal, same shit. It, it's, yeah. it's the same thing. And that's what, I mean... that's what hooks people. When I was a kid, I almost fell into the alt right fucking pipeline or whatever it was called, you know. And I, I, and then I found like SoundCloud music, and then that's how I got like super into like, like, you know, finding Not who I was much. and what I resonated right. with. Because I didn't really resonate with it; I just thought it was funny, all the fucking commentary YouTubers and stuff. But then when I found stuff that resonated with my soul, it was like this free, vibrant, artistic these artistic beings that just create beautiful shit, bro. And they don't right. give a fuck who you are and what you look like. And I'm like, I, I, I like these people, you know, whatever me being fucking like 12, 13, you know, but yeah. beyond that, what I was going to like, pretty much the main point of what I was going to say is like, as a human being, being a true individual, being who you are and being and sticking to your beliefs, like people get brainwashed into being one way or another because of the internet. Yeah. And like, you have example, to be open-minded. For example, like I believe in all my progressive views and sh some shit, but something that people would think I'm conservative for is like I believe in like people having guns. I don't believe in like fully taking away guns. I get that. Guns yeah, I don't. Cool. Yeah, I understand that point. I'm not disagreeing with it, but to completely take away guns from people when we live in a country that's known for violating our human rights constantly, why the fuck would I not want to protect myself just in case yeah, God nah. forbid the worst case scenario? You know. 
Like you get it's, robbed or some shit and you have no way of protecting your slate. It's dumb. Cause like if you outlaw something, that just makes it even better for the people who are doing it. Because guess what? It's it's more illegal. They're, they don't give a fuck. They're already doing something that's illegal to begin with. Why would right. you get if you take away guns, they're still gonna illegally import guns into the US and still be like, oh yeah, fuck right. you. Give me your so shit. Ec- like <laughs> economically, economically, if we were to take away guns, it fucking takes away from the government's income, which oh yeah. Is- you know, lot. yeah, but tax, still, those are going to be guns that aren't taxed because they're being sold illegally. Same thing with drugs, you know, but they're not going to, you know, I don't know the same. I don't know the same reason. I'm make, like, you know, make, make all drugs legal. legal, make all make the drugs we, legal yeah. and then tax them. Fuck it. Or don't or don't let the plugs make the money off it. Who cares? Why is it a fucking controversy? Why is it? Why does it matter whether yeah, no. I believe in one side or the other side when you know what? It's so easy for people to flip sides on any topic. Oh, people absolutely. Are, yeah, no. All it takes is for your phone to tell you what to believe in. And 75% of the population will fucking believe in what they're being told to believe, bro. Yeah. Fuck that. You know? Come on now. So when it comes That's to why, like, like, me personally, I just do my research. That is, just do your exactly. fucking research. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You know, when right. it comes... When it comes to our society and like being edgy nowadays, it's like being edgy is you saying that you just don't agree with something that's perfectly understandable to not agree with in today's society. Yeah, and this because is because people alibi. it's SJWs. This is SJW thing too. It's just a big ass like it's a whole circle jerk of a bunch of different right, shit. Right. And listen, and this isn't me trying to give an excuse or an alibi to the people who really are shitty people, like oh, absolutely ass motherfuckers. Who think like women shouldn't have rights and women belong in the kitchen and gay people die. Listen, I fucking love, you know, I love everybody. But when it comes to like, let's be realistic in the human world. Some people are just like, like with today's society, a lot of people are just naive. And again, it comes from being right. chronically online. And they think we live in this fantasy world where you can do things like, you know, get rid of certain shit and expect to not have a consequence from it. But yeah, the reason why we have all these problems in America or in the world, for that matter, is because everything is checks and balances. If you take away one element of the problem, something else is only going to grow to become worse. You know, if you take away guns, murder, or, or number one, illegal guns are going to become more of a problem. And then, yeah. you know, whatever other fucking crime rates that come with whatever X, Y, and Z. What they should do is make sure that it's more, it's less accessible. That's what they should do. Make it to where it's like, Yo, 21 or older, you can't be 18 to buy a fucking AR. That's stupid as fuck because what the fuck? That causes more school shootings than you can fucking imagine. Um, pistols, everything should be over the age of 21 and you should have the correct registration to get to it. That's what I'm even saying. Even if they're illegal, yeah. And even even if you guys implement, even if the country, yo, this is so funny. This is supposed to be a music podcast. Anywho, whatever. <laughs> Beyond that, even if the government were to implement more like testing, mental testing for people who have guns, I'm right. fine with that because there are people who aren't in the right mindset to own a gun. That's completely understandable. And I mean, you got the other that. ones that aren't. <laughs> right, but <laughs> but for the government. To try to, like, you're telling me the government wants to, number one, increase police funding, number two, decrease education funding, and then number three, take away guns? So you want me to be stupid, you want me to be defenseless, and you want the cops to be fucking militarized. I'm good off that one, you know? Yeah, no, that's communism. Fuck that's, all that. That's fucking communism. That's communism. But anyways, back to the music. <laughs> yeah, and even... Got a little even, bit too political. Even with that, because then communism goes into like a whole thing of economics, and that's a whole other yeah. topic of politics. That's outside of social politics. That's economic politics, you know? So yeah. it's just crazy shit, bro. The big wait, fucking wait. circle jerk is a big ass right? loop. Yeah, man. But long story short, defund the police and keep, let's keep our guns and stuff. But anywho, beyond that, um, but I'm a man of belief. You know, I'm a man of being an individual yeah. and being being yourself. Don't don't let the internet tell you who to be. Fuck that, you know? Long story short, beyond yeah, absolutely. that. Absolutely. Beyond that, man, back to the music. Anywho, back to Triple Six, the collective and stuff like that. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Now, yeah, so actually now moving on to Killicon, what are you working on in the future when it comes to yourself beyond the – hold on. I have to burp. Gas. Wait. It's gone. You good? Anywho, I have to narrate that stuff because there's people who listen audio only. They don't see what's going on. I could just be oh, like I see. dying. Yeah, you know? yeah. But beyond that, with all that being said – Killicon as an individual, what are you looking forward to or what are you working on beyond the collective? Just you as an individual, you have any EPs, albums, anything, any projects? Whatever. So, now that you mention it, I could 
finally do this actually. Oh yeah. Um, I'm going to play a snippet. Wait, do, can you play it off of um like a uh, third party app or something? So it's uh, actually a, a Chris Bot audio. Uh, I mean, you can share your screen on. I mean, I don't know how the phone works. If it's like yeah, I'm not. Yeah, it's not. A, yeah, I'm on my PC right now. That's a part issue. Cause they have these little like add-ons, but it's like fucking like Kahoot and <laughs> yeah. I'm on my archive account. Shit. Oops. You know, so. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I, I made an archive coffee. account. No, you're fine, bro. I'm sick too. Shit. Yeah, man. I, no, for me, my throat is just itchy. I haven't drank any water, and I hit the bong fresh out of bed. So I'm like, oh, nice. <laughs> my throat is like, eh, you know, and I'm here talking. My mouth is dry. I'm like. Wait, let me know if you can hear this or not. I'm just going to play like a small snippet. Go for it. It's very, it's very. Oh, shit. Hold on. My fault. That was so bad. Ah, I'm dropping my fucking water bottle. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, no, no. It's, it's all good. It was drowned out, but then it started sounding good towards the end. I still exit bar, not gonna lie. I can't I can't play the rest of that. No no no, that's the, fine. And the you know, second part you know, is too hard. You know what's cool? Like the fact that it's like a little lower quality from your screen gives it like that like leak quality that you see on like SoundCloud yeah. like, before someone drops yeah. your shit, you know? So that was really cool, just in case like anyone was curious. Um but... I'm gonna play like two more. Yeah, I'm gonna play like two more because I have like thirty fucking unreleased, so I'm just like fuck it. I have a bunch of them. Oh yeah. Buddy and the walls like the party on the cross like I definitely get a little bit of a uh, like a uh, like I get the Florida style from you, like with your flow, yeah. but I get like a little darky influence even. Kind uh, of. I don't really the thing about that. I don't really fuck with darky like that. That's the thing. I don't really like me neither. I don't really fully indulge me, in his music. Me, me neither. I like, don't really listen to his music. I never even really was like. I never even like really liked him for real. I don't dislike him. I just don't like him. Yeah. And so, but but with that being said, like. I, you know, I admire him for what he is and, and what, what he has as a fan base and stuff. It, it's cool that you kind of have yeah. his influence, you know? Like, I feel like you and have his, like, sound. I got you on this last one right here. Hold up. Yep. <laughs> so let me ask you, where did your lyrical influence come from when it comes to making a song? Like, what? what, what oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! So that's that's an interesting question. Um, this song I just played in particular was a diss track against a bunch of fucking different people. Uh, okay. the one before that I played was just like me kind of making some like vibey song. I don't really know how to describe it. I was just, I was fucking around. It was a freestyle. I, right. I mainly just kind of freestyle my lyrics. Like at first I do like my first take. I'm like, I freestyle the first bar. I'm like, okay, let me write the rest. And I write down my first bar and everything so I could do layers and whatnot. So it actually sounds crisp. But yeah, it's my writing process is very, very, very random. Like I choose to write sometimes and other times I just don't write at all. I'm just like, fuck it. I'm just going to freestyle it. All right. That's also me. You just like tap in, you know, you just fucking lock in or however the fuck people go about uh, studio lingo nowadays, you know. But um, yeah, with that with, with, with that being said, um, yeah, I was just curious because, you know, it's cool when people play. Not often do people play their music on the thing. I think we only had like one other episode where someone played their music on the pod and like showed us snippets and shit like that. 
And right. so it's cool. It's, it gives me a cool opportunity to ask these questions. That I don't get to ask sometimes because I'm not going to like go and pull it up myself, you know, even though yeah. maybe I should take that initiative you as probably a podcast should. host. Yeah, you probably but, should do some research as well. Hell yeah. I mean, like I like to like I do research on artists and shit like that, whatever. But I also like to keep it like parts unknown so I can learn about them on the pod. Yeah. Like, like so like I'm learning with the audience. But when it comes to like I've been thinking, bruh. I have ideas for the pod, but it just I'm waiting till I get a camera and I start doing live right, in person yeah. interviews. I'm getting and then maybe I'll implement them into digital ones as well, like virtual ones as well. But anyway, beyond that, you know, it just gives me a cool opportunity to just ask stuff like that. So I was just curious because you were talking about some shit, you know, Chapa Laka is Waka Flocka, you know. So I was like, <laughs> shit, you know, where's like what you know, where where did you come up bro, with? Bro, I that? love Waka Flocka too, man. I had to implement him in the verse, bro. Waka Flocka go crazy. Waka Flocka does go crazy, bro. I'm about Party to make like hit. a spoof Chief Keef song too. I'm about to make like a cemetery ass Chief Keef song. Fuck cemetery That's... though. Fuck cemetery. He's ass as fuck. His newer album sucks dick. Fucking make better music, cemetery. You don't fuck with cemetery's new album, How bro. Come you know... It's disappointing. Come... It's disappointing, bro. It's sad. All right, wait. Explain your reasoning why. Listen. I'm not saying I'm not saying I disagree with you. But I'm not saying <laughs> I agree with you. I just want to hear you out. Yeah, yeah. You good? Listen. After whenever he dropped Buckshot. Cemetery went from here down to here. After he dropped Buckshot entirely, because bro, Buckshot was low key carrying, and like it's kind of sad to see that the people in his collective are doing the, his shit better than he is. Like it's just kind of like he kind of scratch mean? on the head. He doesn't fuck with Buckshot. Well, I think it was Buckshot. It was someone. He dropped someone. I remember he dropped him because I had a conversation with him over Instagram. I was like talking to him and shit because uh, this was around the time that he was getting leaked, like his address and shit was getting leaked. And I had to text him, like, yo, your shit's getting leaked, whatever, whatever. I just don't like the fact that whenever uh dude dropped, I don't remember exactly who. I don't know if it's Buckshot or not. I was oh, assuming wasn't he was. It, you mean Ghost Mountain? Yes, Ghost Mountain. Yeah, Ghost Mountain. When he dropped yeah. Ghost Mountain, bro, everything went downhill. I was like, bro, why? But, like, I understand they had a little beef and whatnot. I could get that. But, like, yet again, bro, it's just disappointing. It's just disappointing. Bro, to me, bro, like, here, I mean, I'm just, like, this is me for real, like, as a music enjoyer. Ghost Mountain, in my opinion, is way more talented than Cemetery on a bunch of levels. I really like Ghost Mountain stuff a lot more than Cemetery when it comes to like their stuff together. But <laughs> Cemetery as an artist himself, it kind of co- they kind of no, co- my two points kind of even correlate. I like Ghost Mountain better than Cemetery because every song that they were on together, Cemetery was extremely unexperienced and un- yeah. unevolved as an artist. Cemetery as an artist himself, without focusing on Ghost Mountain or Haunted Mound or anything of the sort, I fuck with Cemetery Heavy because he's the first artist that I got into like that right. to where I wanted to learn about him since Little Pete. And I haven't, and that was what five, six years ago that I found yeah, Little that Pete, was a while. you know? So Cemetery as an artist has evolved a lot, and I think his new project was really good, actually. Mm. Subjective. I mean, Music subjection. So exactly. It's okay. that's, yeah, that's it's subjective. Everything's subjective, which is cool. But like, yeah, I don't know. You know, and the only reason why I think it was really good is because I I think his his production is getting better. I think his yeah. flows are getting better. I sometimes it gets a little repetitive. I will admit. Very. But and also He's still stuck on that. It's just like the thing he ripped off Chief entirely. Like all of his shit is just literally all chief. his shit is chief key from his style to his flows to all yeah, of it it's literally I get everything that he, is just chief i get that chief. he mixes like the salem witch house vibe to it and stuff like that yeah I, f- I like that though i fuck with that though me but too, he needs to too. expand on that more he needs to expand on that aspect more than just the chief keef shit because like but you know what? i feel like if he expands on that more i think he'll get a little bit farther with what he's doing I'm seeing elements of Cemetery expanding like beyond like the horizon when it comes to like that Chief Keef boundary he keeps himself in, at least with right. the new project, because towards the end of it, like towards the end of Butcher, like what was it? Butcher House, it was called. Like it was very like that fucking last song was very slow and melodic. What was it like Little Lamb or some shit? I haven't checked up the entire thing. I, I listened to like four of the songs. Like, <sighs> no, nah, man, the first four like, oh, are right. a little rough, too, but he has a Black Cray feature. I didn't the, see that. The I sick boy, that. the sick boy Rari featured as Black Cray with fucking um Turnabout and and Hackle. That song's good. The song he has with Turnabout, Angel Makers or some shit, really good. 
the later the second half of the album is really good i'm not gonna lie i enjoyed it mm. so that's I'll probably why i didn't like it i'll check it out again fuck it yeah because bobby yaga and stuff like that those were kind of boring i was like yeah i will yeah. tell you it, the album grew on me over time at first i didn't really care for it you know it's like how people are with 100 gex like the 100 gex album like fucking that shit sucked to like most people and then like people actually start listening to it, it's like this is so fire i'm still like damn this shit sucks <laughs> bro i'm not gonna lie i hopped on the 100 gex wave and I low key, I still fuck with some of their songs to this day, but that's just because I like weird music, you know? Right. But. Uh, hold on. My hair's bothering the fuck out of me right now. No, it's all good. That's why I got my shit tied up. They yeah, I need getting, to get a fucking beanie. Should be getting greasy and shit. I'm like, yo, get off me. Get off my neck. Get off me. It's because I have a lot of long hair and I have a wolf cut and shit. So it's like, it makes it worse. Yo, we're, I'm just growing my shit out fully right now. That's why I got the whole, you know, little fucking samurai thing going on. Oh, but um, with all that, I want to fucking, man, when I get tired of this shit, pro- I want to grow this shit out long. Like, I want to be on some Willie Nelson shit. But after oh, that, type pro- shit, yeah. I want to do a crazy haircut. Like, you say you got the wolf cut, and that's cool. You know, I never yeah. seen a, I never seen a dude do the wolf cut. I've seen, like, fucking plenty of TikTok girls do the wolf cut and shit like that. But, yeah. You know, I haven't seen any dudes, so that's cool. I want to do a crazy cut, though, when I get sick of this hair, man. And then I want to go bald. I'm going to end up dying it soon whenever I move out, because, uh, like, my dad is very religious. He's like, no, I'm not allowed. I'm like, I got you, bro. I'll do it when I move out. That's cool. I, I dealt with that, too, bro. I mean, I stopped giving a fuck, but, like, when I lived in my parents' house, like, my stepdad, like, he was very against, like, fucking nail polish and piercings yep. and shit. Yup. You know, it's not like me shitting on him or nothing like that. You know, I get people come up in different environments. Well, yeah, of course. Come up in a different time. It's a little ex- He was a little extra and dramatic about it. It's like, why are you so insecure yeah. about it? I love you, Omar, out there. Anywho, whatever. <laughs> beyond that, you know, he doesn't even watch the pod, so it's whatever. You know, beyond that, <laughs> you know. He will one day. Just, you know, beyond that, it was just like, you know, why do you give a fuck so much? I stopped giving a fuck once I hit, like, 18. I started getting tattoos. He... I started getting tattoos, and he already got disappointed in me for getting a tattoos. That's when I just stopped caring, and I fucking did the fucking... I had the piercing, and I stopped caring about whether it was tucked up or anymore, and I did this, right. and, and the gauges and stuff, and yeah. Even though these are little. These aren't even gauges. They look like earrings, but he was against earrings, too, so, you know? That's how they are. Like, Is he a boomer, I'm guessing? No, no, no. He's he's younger, but he's it, it comes from oh. a little bit of religious, a little bit from just coming up in the hood, cause oh, I see. You know, so that's just what it be. You know, that's just no, what I it get be. that. Yeah, I get that. It also just comes with age. You got to remember, like we're coming up in a time where things are changing the quickest they've ever changed to ever. So yep. people like people from anywhere people are from afraid the fuck- of change. People Scared from anywhere. Change. People anywhere born anywhere from the early eighties before that are used to, like, slow, gradual change and, like, tradition and shit, you know? Now we live in an era where everything's super progressive and everything's super different and super modern, you know? Yeah. It's like nobody is no longer... There's no longer enforcing religion onto anyone or, you know, whatever the fuck nobody wants to endure, you know? Yeah. And I think so, that's I think that's cool. I don't think that people should yeah. be forced to be fucking doing something they don't want to do. Like, that's why right. I, I firmly believe that whenever like you want to get into religion that's perfectly fine i don't i don't disrespect you for it i don't hate you for it but yet again don't push that on me you know what i mean right exactly and it's and and it's good because we're creating a better world for the future however yeah no human likes change no human is going to accept change wholeheartedly like that off first instinct a lot of people get scared by change so a lot of this generation and older people just don't understand it you know and i was talking about that the other day I had said something. Oh, me and my girlfriend were talking about how the world, the word alt has changed over time. Alternative, yeah. alternative rock or alternative used to mean like, you know, whatever alternative form of music there was on going on in the pop culture. Like in the 90s, it was grunge, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. In the 80s, it was probably more towards like metal and stuff like that. That was what was alternative. Now, alt to be alt means you're anything that falls under alt emo punk scene goth whatever yeah. and it's, it's a bunch just of like different st- subcategories yeah and it's like that, that's not what that <laughs> meant before you know and me and my girlfriend were talking about it and i told her in the instant i was like yo i sound like an old head right now like i sound like an old fucking cranky old man who's scared of <laughs> what i'm used to changing you know and you know yeah. shitting on the new generation shitting on the kids for starting something <clears throat> new 
when I should, you know, when we should be embracing it. But, you know. And that's why I also think that our generation, like the newest generation, is like very, very, very powerful because of a lot of this shit, TikTok, Instagram, all these social medias, that shit is very, very powerful. Like, especially if it's a very big creator, they can really, they could tell a bunch of kids, oh, sniff fucking glue. Sniff some glue. And they'll, they'll do, do it. it. They'll fucking sniff they'll it. They'll sniff it. that yep. fucking glue. They'll sniff that glue. <laughs> they'll do they'll it. And guess it. what? They'll, they'll get hella money for it, too, for having a bunch of kids killing themselves. And that's actually how the Tide Pod Challenge started, too. Dude, it was have people you heard killing about, themselves. I was on Instagram the other day, within this last week, for sure. And I fucking read about the Benadryl Challenge came back up, and some kid fucking died oh, on yeah. the Benadryl Challenge. Yeah, that was on um, Dom's News. Yeah, Dom. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that was so, on Dom's News. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's fucking crazy. Yo, do you? Oh man, I don't know. Did you watch Domus live before he was a news outlet, bro? Um, semi sort of. Yeah, semi sort of. I remember when he was a GTA YouTuber, bro. People don't remember yeah. that anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he used to do GTA. I remember that too. Yeah. All right. I just have to make sure him and like fucking what was it like not point four live or some shit or no? It was like I fucking crazy Teddy or some shit. Something yeah, I know like you're that. talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anywho, um. Not to, like, nerd out or anything. But beyond that, I want to talk a little... Get back on track. Move away from this. I wanted to touch on something before we kind of wrap up the podcast, which was something you brought up earlier. I want to talk uh-huh. about, like, your your skate career or your skate hobby, whatever you would want to call oh, it. Oh, lordy lord. Skater. How did that come to be? Were you serious about it? Did you want to go pro? Talk. We have, we've had... Um, one other we've had one other dude who skated on the pod before but i don't know how serious you take it or took it me personally i kind of did it as a hobby for a while and then like my friend ricky who sadly got into like a bunch of like a bunch of shit himself so he doesn't even fucking skate anymore he's dude that guy is talented as fuck that kid is really talented he started skating and immediately started learning kickflips and then immediately started doing tray flips i was like what the fuck and i'm sitting here like what was his name ricky Ricky, yeah, shout out Ricky, shout out Ricky, bro. bro I, I was sitting there trying to do a fucking ollie. This was like the first day me skating. I'm trying to sit there doing ollie, and this man already did a kickflip first try. I'm like, fuck you. I'm like, bro. And then like he taught me, he taught me how to do a bunch of uh, a bunch of tricks and shit. And now I'm more on the freestyle skate uh, spectrum. Like I do like freestyle skate and shit. Like I know how to do um Casper flip shit like that. And I did want to go pro for a little bit. When I did make bomb vest, that was kind of the ordeal. I wanted to go pro. But the problem about going pro on skating is that you have to be really fucking good. And I'm not really that good. Ricky has more of a chance than me because that man, he could dark side now. He could fucking do full on dark dark sides out to fucking trays or some shit, like some crazy fucking line. I'll be sitting here like, I'll do a kick flip. <laughs> I'll do bro. a fucking kick. I mean, I could never even, I could never, oh my God. I never even accomplished how to do the ollie. I understand it in my head, but I never even yeah. was able to do it physically, you know? It's all about balance and foot pressure. It's all about balance and foot pressure. And, like, it's it's a journey. Like, learning how to skate is also a very mental thing. It's a very big mental thing. And 99% of skating is mental. It's just, like, uh, like when you're trying to ollie a stair gap or you're trying to do a trick off of something or you're trying to do it, literally anything, anything in skating is mental. It's just because the only reason why you won't be able to land it is because you're scared of hurting yourself. And that's the one thing that I kind of overcame. And I was like, fuck this. I don't care. And that's actually why I quit because I was, I cared too little. And I ended up um, fucking up my hand. If I don't know if you could see, but my hand is like out of like, my joint is like back here. Yeah. You kind of have like three knuckles going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got, I got, bro, I'm like a, I'm like a mutant right now. Like I, I swear. And yeah, like, it's actually because of the bone that's like supposed to be like right here. It popped mm-hmm. out of place, like it popped out, and it's like right here now. But I could still move my hand; everything's fine with it. Like I can fight right. and shit still. It just healed but... broken type shit, yeah. Yeah, and that, yeah, that shit happens. But that's cool, man. I mean, I always thought there was one topic. There's always one topic I want to talk about. I did want to mention this is about my fights because that's that's one thing I'm very kind of known for. I fight a lot. Like I'm a very big like I I my dad's a boxer. He taught me how to box. Uh, my homeboy does MMA. Uh, a bunch of shit i literally hang out with boxers musicians and skaters that's my whole life that's literally you know, all that, i hang out with it's so cool that you say that bro because like literally like if i had to like pick like my top three like things is like music combat sports because i'm like i like a, I'm, I'm a wrestling fan i know like wrestling's technically fake right. but i also fuck with like mma and shit so 
Like, wrestling isn't fake. I mean, some wrestling is not fake. Some of it's real as fuck. And I've experienced that myself. I got put in a really bad chokehold. I was like, you got that. You got that, bro. You got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, with that being Trying said. Trying to kill me stuff, and shit. Yeah, music. And I fucking love, I thought skaters are always so cool. And I always thought that, like, I always thought skating was cool because skating is one culture. And I don't know if there's many other cultures that go beyond that. Or many other, like, things that go beyond that where it's a culture right. that is a sport. It has music involved. There's clothing involved. There's yeah. a lingo involved. There's style involved. There's a lot of shit. It's a lot of it's different shit. It's a full-on culture, like, yeah, based around a fucking sport with a plank and wheels, and I thought that was so cool, you know? It, it is. It's kind of insane how that came to be, too, because originally, skateboarding was, like, a joke. It was literally a whole joke that was started because they a dude fucking put a plank with some wheels on it. He's like, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this yeah. shit. Right on it. <laughs> Yeah. And then, like, people like Rodney Mullen, Tony Hawk, people like, um, I, I don't want to say, um, I don't want to say fucking, um, what's his name? Uh, fuck. The dude from the Braille House, because he's in really, like, the one who started it. But I'm saying more or less, like, Rodney Mullen, Tony Hawk. That's the people who actually, like, put freestyle and also vert and also all these other cool shit. Rodney Mullen was a person who discovered the kickflip. And he was the first person to actually really implement tricks into skating. And that's how all that started and that's how the whole culture began because after he did that shit people were like that's fucking sick i could do that too and then people started doing it and then people started making music about it because they're like yo i do this let me rap about it and then it just became a whole circle and then people started making clothing brands and shoes and boards and bolts and all this other shit it's just a very big culture that i surround myself around could it, it is something bro i've i made my own skateboards hold on i have my own skateboard i made it like i i fucking my homie E Rock, he helped me make this board. Like I, I fully made this bitch. It's harmless to steal from Walmart. That's awesome. <laughs> it kind of just goes with what you talked about earlier. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was actually play. because of that. That was literally because I used to fuck around at Walmart so much. She's like, I'm just gonna make a board that says harmless to steal from Walmart. I, I got you, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, no, man. And 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 the cool thing about it, bro, is like there's so many different like cultural phenomenons that were cool, like surrounded by skating or like heavily implemented by skating like things that people fucking fully love whether it was mtv with all the rob deerdeck shows yeah whether it was fucking little wayne with his fucking truck fit co- fucking clothing brand Yo, little like, wayne's raw as fuck i don't know yeah, how he's yeah, such yeah. a good skater i was like what the fuck and i discovered fuck. i was like yo he skates i'm like bro <laughs> yeah, he, and apparently he's a pro skater now, you know? Yeah, Whether, he is. Or, or if you look at fucking Odd Future. They That's went, a really they, big one. That's bro, one that put me there, too. Odd Future was clothes, music. They yep. skated. They did bikes. They fucking did everything. That was a really big thing about skate culture, too, because Odd Future was one of the things that kind of put it more out there. Because, like, Tyler, the creator, big fucking artist. Earl Sweatshirt, kind of, kind of big. Frank Ocean. Like, these are some big names. Like, these are some really big names. And they, when they created Odd Future, they had the little TV show. That's kind of what I was doing. That's why I did Bomb Vest. Bomb Vest was originally supposed to be like Odd Future. It was supposed to be exactly like Odd Future. Not exactly, but it was supposed to have those elements where it's just like a bunch of dudes fucking around skating, having fun, doing whatever. And right. and that my collective now is more or less like members only, except for the fact that I'm actually trying to implement more of that Odd Future type style into it as well. So, like, having like more of those fun like what the fuck videos and then also having those like serious music videos and all the other stuff you know and like another thing about my collective i did want to say this if um whenever i have people in my collective the only rule i have is i stole this from x not gonna lie is that if you're at least if you're doing something if you're doing something for the collective if you're trying to do something for us then you're good you can do whatever but if you're not doing anything then you get kicked out that's just how it is right and um yeah man it's cool that it's cool that you kind of have like a uh like a strategy at it with when it comes to everything you know kind of like have it all mapped out in your head it's good yeah. to be like pre-planned but also it's good to keep it fresh and keep it on the whim and like make sure you know you just let me like, find someone who will do it i'm gonna yeah, go. we'll say when i'm a leo oh leo got it yeah Understood. cool man hell yeah but um no, yeah, I was just curious, really, about the skating, but then that opened the whole, like, door into, like, the culture and, like, talking about the culture of skating and stuff like that. Um, And it's cool, man, because there's so many, again, like, with the just the cultural phenomenons that were birthed from the cultural phenomenon itself that was skating, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's cool, bro. 
But now we reach towards the end of the podcast, which before I do like an official wrap up, and you know, it's around the time that we wrap it up. Like it's been like an hour yes, sir. And change. Um <clears throat> I like to ask the guests that we have on the episode, the pod, whatever, if there's anything about you, any topics that we did not cover about Kilicon that you feel should have been covered, because at the end of the day it's your podcast episode and it's your, you know. Mm. So you- yeah, no, I get that. Um not entirely. Um, the only thing I do want to say, shout out Triple Six, shout out Infinitus, shout out E-Rock, shout out fucking Don't Karai, shout out me. <laughs> shout out shout all out the homies, home. bro. Hell shout yeah, out man. all the homies. Y'all should go check out Triple Six for real. That We got some shit going for y'all. And we'll have the links hopefully in the description, you know. To yeah, whatever. I'll send that to you after, yeah. Hell yeah. So with that being said, now we will wrap it up, which is kind of, you know, we have the little outro gist or whatever. Or not really, because usually we have another question and then the outro gist. So it kind of goes a little like this, this last question before we get wrapped up, which is, Kilicon, what do you got going on in the next day, week, fucking month, year, decade, century, millennium? And it doesn't so, have to be related. It could be what you're eating for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> My plan currently, I'm just going to talk about music wise because it's more mainly on music. But right. music wise, I am going to start dropping every uh, two days, which I'll be trying to drop uh, every, uh, let me look at my calendar real quick. Uh, I think it's every Tuesday and every Friday I'll be dropping. Uh, I'll drop a single song every Tuesday and Friday. And then um, relatively soon, I have this three song little EP mixtape type of thing. It's literally, uh, if you ever heard G- Ghetto Gospel, it's literally the beat for Ghetto Gospel, just like on three different versions, because I didn't know which one to post. So that's coming out soon. Triple Six EP, that's coming out the end of this month or the next month. Um, some of my other, uh, some of my other homies in the collective have some shit going on as well. I don't really know what to say about that because I don't really, I'm not in their brain. So, right, yeah, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, before. Oh. Feature with high techs. Feature with high techs. One of my great, like a really big artist uh, in the underground scene, the homie high techs. I'm also part of Club Pink, which is another collective that's a whole different subject. Subject. I'm in like three collectives, but um, shout out the homie uh, uh, high techs, bro, because his shit's a banger. Like his shits are good. Like for real. Like hmm. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Uh, what was I gonna ask before we <coughs> it up? You just God bless you. If that was a sneeze. That was a, that was a cough. Well, I'm like dying of sickness. There you, there you are. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Fuck, I had something else to say real quick before we wrapped it up. What was that question? Damn. Damn. It's I, right, oh. man. Yeah, damn. Fuck it, right? Whatever. If it comes back to me before I finish it up, then not. If not, then fuck it, right? Broom. I mean, but, we could always have a part two sometime soon in the future. Who knows? Right. Ex- exactly. You know, kind of just catch up from there on out. Um. Yeah. With that being said. Oh, yeah. This was the Cult of Personality podcast hosted by yours truly, Mike McChapla. With me today was Kilicon for the last hour or so. Thank you for sitting with me for the last hour and asking or answering my trivial questions, you know? Yes, and sir. thank you, people watching and listening for the last hour on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and everything else that we're on. Um, Happy Mikey Monday. Thank you guys for tuning in. I don't know. Oh, I do know what we have next week going on. Next week is actually the season finale for third season of cold personality podcast so tune in for that and love is you know love you all fucking what, what what's the what's the new, what's the next holiday coming up what what would they be in happy happy easter easter pass oh no yeah no easter, easter pass. pass yeah easter pass what is April? um happy hanukkah oh fucking no thanksgiving right? um fuck i don't know so happy something April. happy birthday <laughs> hey no Damn. Ain't nothing coming up. Anyway, peace, love, and hair grease from the Cold Personality Podcast. We'll see you next week. I'm Mike McChoppa. This was Killicon. Peace out.